Jason Popjoy's new book is the first in a wonderful new series which we've established, Cambridge Asylum and Migration Studies. Series editor, Professor James Hathaway from the University of Michigan and a world authority who trains practitioners and teachers around the world. Cambridge's relationship with Professor Hathaway goes right back to 2005 when we had the pleasure of publishing his seminal, The Rights of Refugees Under International Law. And more recently, in 2014, a second edition of his classic, The Law of Refugees Status. It is intended in due course that new editions of both these titles will join the same series, Cambridge Asylum and Migration Studies. The press also has a wonderful backlist in many monographs in our International Law and Human Rights series and titles on our politics and history lists. We very much seek to have an innovative forum in this series for people writing across disciplines and not just only in law. The press also has a relationship with UNHCR in Geneva. A recent title is here and we hope to have a wide variety of publishing across many types of books for future readers. If you'd like to write for the series, you will also find that we have an excellent advisory board set up, details on our website, with experts ranging from Geneva to Sweden to Oxford to Canada and New York. So please get in touch with myself, Fanola O'Sullivan, the publisher, or with Professor Hathaway or with any of the advisory board. We look forward to working with you. And in 2018, in the spring, the second title in this new series will publish from Daniel Gazellebosch at Macquarie University in Sydney, again writing on asylum in an interdependent world. We look forward to growing this series with you. My name is Jason Pobjoy. I'm a practicing barrister at Blackstone Chambers in London and a research associate at the Refugee Study Centre at the University of Oxford. And I'm the author of The Child in International Refugee Law, published by Cambridge University Press. The book started uh, its life as a doctorate at the University of Cambridge. And at that stage, I'd done quite a lot of work, both uh, on children's rights and international refugee law. And I, what I was particularly interested in was the interplay between those two, those two areas of law. And uh, a lot of terrific work had been done by a number of organisations, including UNHCR, um, and also by a number of academics, uh, identifying the need to engage with the Convention on the Rights of the Child when dealing with refugee children. Uh, but, but what was really missing at that stage was a comprehensive analysis uh, which showed precisely the role that international law on the rights of the child and the Convention on the Rights of the Child in particular might play uh, in determining the status of refugee children. Uh, and that was the gap that I was seeking to fill with, with this book. So refugee children face uh, a number of challenges and a number of obstacles at each stage uh, following displacement. So starting at um, the entry into the, uh, into the border of a host state, uh, all throughout the refugee determination process, and then also in the realisation of rights after refugee uh, status has been established. Uh, what the Child and International Refugee Law, what, what the book focuses on is uh, the refugee status determination process. And the two key challenges that I identified in that particular context are first, uh, invisibility, and, and second, incorrect assessment. So in the context of invisibility, children are very often overlooked in the status determination uh, process. Either a child might be unaccompanied or separated and so just is never even identified, uh, but, but also children that are accompanied by their parents are often just viewed as an appendage to their, their parents and there is no individual consideration of the child's independent claim, even though the child may very well have a stronger claim than the parents. Um, the second challenge, incorrect assessment, uh, even where kids were being looked at, they were very much being looked at through the prism of, uh, kind of a, a, an adult's perspective. And there was no uh, consideration given to the specific vulnerabilities of children when assessing each of the elements of the refugee definition. So the well-founded fear requirement, the being pursued requirement, the requirement, uh, the, the nexus requirement, the requirement for a particular um, uh, convention ground. Uh, and uh, as a result, 
uh, children's claims were being rejected on the basis that they didn't meet this uh, threshold, which was inappropriate uh, when applied to children. Uh, so having identified these uh, two core challenges, uh, both invisibility and incorrect assessment, I, I went about trying to test the extent to which these two international legal regimes, international law on the right to the child on the one hand, uh, and international refugee law on the other hand, uh, could collectively try to overcome those challenges. And one of the key sources uh, that I went to um, to, to answer that question were the decisions of domestic courts and tribunals. This is particularly important in the refugee context given the absence of a supervisory court or tribunal. And I spent over a year uh, collating and indexing over two and a half thousand decisions involving refugee children, predominantly from Canada, the United Kingdom, the United States, Australia and New Zealand uh, from all levels, whether it be the, the uh, um, original tribunal decisions uh, up to the ultimate appellate court decisions. And uh, these cases were all indexed, coded, and what I identified was that there was this still very nascent and so somewhat fractured, but, but there was this body of case law which was starting to, to engage uh, with the Convention on the Rights of the Child in the context of refugee claims. So, so the book is really targeted at anybody interested in um, issues facing refugee children and also very much anyone working with refugee children. Uh, I'm a practicing barrister. Uh, I do a lot of work uh, in the refugee area um, and in particular uh, cases involving refugee children. And so in uh, designing the, the research questions and the methodology and, and also the way that the, the book is structured, uh, I very much um, had in mind trying to make it as useful as possible for uh, immigration practitioners. In many cases involving refugee children, the Convention on the Rights of the Child will have a critical role to play uh, in, in enhancing the protection to be afforded to that child, whether that be in securing procedural guarantees for the child, in acting as an interpretive aid in interpreting the various elements of the refugee definition, or uh, providing an independent source of protection uh, outside the refugee framework, the international refugee framework. And it's only by engaging with both international refugee law and international law on the rights of the child, uh, it's only by engaging with these mutually uh, reinforcing regimes that a child will get the protection to which they're entitled to under international refugee law and, and which they so desperately need.